was uh, probably one of the toughest years to schedule. Um, we, we changed our schedule four times since August. Uh, just not knowing um, what uh, we were going to be able to do. Um, so we had a normal schedule back in August where we wrestled uh, up to 16 weeks. And uh, we've cut it down now um, to seven weeks uh, with, with ranking matches being an eighth week before the conference tournament. Um, you know, with, uh, with Big Ten shutting down, uh, uh, shutting down their, their teams to only compete against each other, it kind of minimized a little bit of our schedule because uh, historically we wrestled Minnesota and, and Iowa and we were actually planning on wrestling uh, the University of Michigan as well this year. So um, uh, just things kind of happened uh, in a way that uh, um, where we were just scrambling to, to put, put a uh, schedule together and obviously wrestling one day a week uh, with the uh, seven weekends um eight being the um the ranking matches one two three four five six seven yeah uh we're fortunate enough to get four meets at home you know so that's not ideal but it's the best we can do i think we're making all the right decisions for wrestling um and and giving our student athletes the best opportunity to compete at the ncaa championships so with that, uh, I'll open it up for questions. All right, your first question will come from Jason Umquist. Go ahead, Jason. Hey, John, obviously you look at the, the first weekend of, of wrestling against somebody outside of, of your guys' own room, and it, it almost has like a high school feel, you know, this, this kind of round robin, two mats and, and whatnot. You know, you, you talked about the, kind of just the craziness of the schedule. I mean, how, how unique? I mean, when's the last time you recall gallagher Iba having – two mats set up, uh, for, uh, for duels. Yeah. I don't know if it's ever happened. Um, you know, for, uh, I think, you know, it's it, not in my career. Um, uh, and I've, I've been watching a lot of cowboy wrestling, even when I was a kid, but, uh, you know, I think that the, the challenge Jason is, you know, you always want to present an event, uh, to your public that's, nice and fun and quick. Um, it's going to be hopefully nice and hopefully fun, but it's not going to be quick this year. Um, it's going to be stretched out. And uh, again, we're going to try to highlight some of the dual meets. So if people want to come for one dual meet, um, we'll let them know the time and, the, and uh, that we're going to be wrestling that dual meet. Um, but, you know, I think the, the focus for us as my staff this this season is to recognize that we have a lot of young people that need matches and, and so uh, we're going to be wrestling a lot of extra matches at, 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 um, we're wrestling a dual meet against a particular team so somebody's dog's barking <laughs> yeah and it's freaking <laughs> out my dogs <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, yeah, go ahead. So, uh, you know, we just try to stretch some things out and, and uh, I'm, you see, you see little rock on there three times. Um, you know, we're, we're bringing in little rock on January the 10th, but we're not wrestling on January 10th. Uh, just don't feel like I want to wrestle three dual meets this early in the season on one day. Um, so we will wrestle 10, uh, Tennessee Chattanooga and we'll wrestle Oregon State and Little Rock will also wrestle Oregon State and, and UTC Chattanooga um, so you know it, it, it's uh, it's a challenging year and everybody knows that in every sport and um, it was no different with us I know on the schedule it mentions the the orange and black uh, rankings and whatnot. Is that something you're going to try to have open to the public just so those guys get that that uh, that opportunity to wrestle in front of some some people? Yes, it will be opened up to the public, um, and it will be an opportunity for some of our guys to get to, to wrestle close to their weight and uh, be able to kind of give an idea where they're at uh, seven days before we actually wrestle. So 
um, you know, the, the matches that we'll have on January 10th, we will try to wrestle a lot of extra matches. And so, you know, we're going to wrestle two dual meets and following those two dual meets, there'll be some additional wrestling going on with some teams that have brought extra guys. Um, uh, we've pretty much shut down all tournaments. And uh, because of that, we got to find matches for these guys. So that's our challenge. You know, uh, there's going to be some freshmen this year that, uh, that may get four or five, six matches, and that's the record. Um, but at least it's something, you know, where uh, historically we're up into the, the 20s and, and the low 20s for some of those freshmen that are redshirting. Um, but this year is going to be a different different season. You, you spoke of the, the tournaments being shut down, but obviously you guys are kind of having a, a mini one at home uh, late in the season. What, was that kind of a opportunity for, for guys to just feel and experience and, and, you know, trying to get their bodies ready for wrestling, uh, you know, a handful of matches uh, as they're going to have to do a few weeks after that with postseason? Yeah, that's uh... – you know, here's kind of ha what happened with that with that 14th, the date of the 14th is uh, all of a sudden um, we we had a few calls from Wyoming um, and we we couldn't wrestle them on the day that we were hoping to wrestle them because of some schedule conflicts with some other teams in the Big 12. You know, then we all of a sudden ended up with Missouri, who we planned on dueling on a certain certain weekend, and, and it, it ended up falling through. So we ended up on the 14th with um, West Virginia, uh, Missouri, uh, UCO, and Wyoming. Um, what are we going to do with all, all these four teams, you know, and – we just came to the conclusion that we could add a few uh, extra guys and and build a bracket of eight. Um, and that that day, it's going to be a quick tournament, you know. So anybody that wrestles into the championship round will wrestle three matches. Anybody that wrestles to the semifinals, which will be have to win in one match, um, uh, the losers of the semis will just wrestle for third and fourth. We won't have a series of cons consolations. So some guys will get one match if they don't win their first match. Um, uh, some guys, uh, you're either going to get one or you're going to get three matches, you know. Um, so eight-man bracket uh, takes three matches to win. Uh, if you lose in the semis, you, you'd have wrestled two, and, and, and those two individuals – that lost will compete for third and fourth. So we plan on running the finals of that day at one o'clock. Um, and so if people wanted to come just for one o'clock on a Sunday, um, they're gonna be able to see the finals uh, and they're gonna be able to see the consolations wrestled um, two mats next to each other. And hopefully we have all 10, you know, in, in the finals or in the consolation finals. Now, now, obviously the kind of the timing of that tournament kind of works perfectly because uh, Dayton's suspension is supposed to end the basically that week leading up to it. Uh, how big is that going to be for him getting an opportunity to get, especially get some big 12 guys, potentially uh, get some, some matches in to help him uh, to figure out the seating and whatnot uh, with, with big 12s right around the corner after that. Well, it's, it, you know, definitely went into thinking about what we want to do that day. Um, but it, it also was, um, we also focused on um, some of our younger guys being able to compete against some, some guys that are in the top 10 or top five in the nation. Um, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good opportunity for him to be, to, to break out. And, and uh, I'm going to tell you, you know, this is a competitive, that'll be a competitive weekend. You know, um, both West Virginia and Wyoming have two solid teams. Of course, Missouri uh, uh, has been um, uh, right there in the top 10 for the last several years. Uh, and I think you can't underestimate UCO. You know, I was glad that uh, Coach Steidley uh, 
uh, agreed to this. Um, uh, you know, they're, they're ranked uh, second and third in two different polls in the nation in Division Two. They got several guys that have uh, won a lot of matches against Division One, so we're excited to have them. They're going to be a good team. So uh, it'll be a quality event uh, uh, that day. And, of course, we'll weigh in at uh, 8 o'clock, start wrestling, or excuse me, weigh in at 7 o'clock, start wrestling at 9, and we should be uh, in a position at 1 o'clock to – present the finalists uh, and the Constellation final wrestlers. Thanks, John. Mm -hmm. Let me just make one thing, um, uh, be aware of one thing is um, the conference championship. Um, uh, right now, there is a possibility of the conference championship to be moved uh, back a week. Um, so, um, just kind of be aware of that. I, I know we, we went ahead and, and put it on our schedule for the weekend of, uh, the sixth and the seventh. Um, there's a little bit of a conversation about if somebody tests positive, um, you know, uh, you know, in, in their last dual meet, uh, it's going to, uh, take them out of the conference championship. So, um, and some people are worried about following the Big 12 championship if somebody tests positive. Uh, is there enough time for that athlete to be able to compete for the championship in the NCAA championship? So uh, if, it, if it changes, it'll change back to um, the weekend before March the 6th and 7th. Just so you know, we'll make you aware of it. But for now, that has not changed. But um, I would say it's 50-50 uh, that, that, that could change to the weekend before. Okay, your next question will come from Adam Engel of the Ocali. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Coach. Uh, so something I've noticed on social media and just other stuff is that a lot of your wrestlers and you really like to hunt. And a, a few weeks ago, Ethan Kyle said that there was a time – several years ago where you showed up to practice with your face all cut up after falling from a tree stand. Do, uh, do you mind talking a little bit about that? You know, that was, uh, um, that was, uh, an experience that, uh, lacked intelligence. Um, you know, I was uh, putting up a tree stand and my dad was with me and Joseph was actually with me. Joseph was, uh, I don't know, four, five, six years old. Um, and I was probably a little bit too high in the tree where I set my stand up. And then secondly, I did not have a harness, which I, I normally have a harness, but I, I was trying to hurry up so we could come back and catch the football game here at OSU. So uh, I ended up getting up there and forgetting my harness and strapping a tree stand in. And as I'm strapping the back strap, it snaps right in two. And so my, I'm heading straight down and I hit a, what we call a hip heist in the middle of the air. And I was able to reach for a limb and I reached for the limb, crashed through the limb, did a full 360, landed right on my back, and um, I thought I was doomed. Um, I, I never felt that kind of pain. Um, I was with my father um, and I kind of recovered after four or five minutes and uh, I get up and I say, I'm fine, let's go, let's go to the football game. And my dad goes, no, we're going to the hospital. And I said, dad, I'm fine. He goes, no, we're going to the hospital. Anyway, um, Good thing we did go to the hospital. I had some internal bleeding and it would have been not good in four or five hours if I wasn't there. So they put me on medication and I actually got to the half. I got to the football game and I got to watch the second half. And, and uh, I feel like it was the Texas game where we won, which we won a lot of games against Texas. But um, I was sure glad I made it for the second half. So anyway, make a long story short, I, um, my wrestling skills, um, probably saved me. 
Awesome. Thank you. Uh, just w one other question I had, uh, you know, I, I noticed on the schedule, Oregon State coming to town. Uh, how weird is it to, you know, compete or I guess coach against one of your former athletes in Chris Pendleton? You know, you know, I don't think too much about it. We want to whip them, you know, and, um, you know, you, you want them to be successful and, um, you know, that's uh, why, you know, with the Little Rock being a first year program, um, we wanted to create an opportunity for them to be able to get matches and, and uh, we want them to be successful. Uh, we don't want them to be too good where they're, you know, uh, but, uh, but we, 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 we feel, you know, uh, Neil Orsman is there and, and I, and he was here and he wrestled for me. Um, you know, if you look historically, I've always, um, you know, I always felt like I had a responsibility to put guys that are head coaches out there from Oklahoma state on our schedule. Uh, we wrestle Wyoming every year. We don't have to do that. Uh, that's important to us. Um, so anyway, um, you might see us going back to Oregon state next year, you know, so. Um, you might see us, uh, as you do see us, we're going to wrestle Little Rock at Little Rock on January the 17th. Uh, even though they're going to be here on the 10th, we're not wrestling them here because we needed to, I felt like we needed on February the 7th, we needed to, more than just one match in that day. Um, and it's a little bit crazy of a schedule to be wrestling OU and then get your guys in the van and, and bring them back to Stillwater to wrestle a match. But it's just things that we're going to need to do to, to make sure that we're developing through the season. Thanks, Coach. You're welcome. Next question come from Marshall Scott. Uh, yeah, Coach. Um, have, with, with the schedule being out, do you feel any closer – on a lineup or are those, those ranking matches going to help determine that a little bit? Yeah, that those ranking matches are going to be good. You know, it's going to, going to give us a little bit of idea of uh, where people are, you know, um, uh, we, we have pretty good matchups at, at 125, um, 133, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're likely to see a couple Oklahoma kids, uh, Andrew Neiman and, um, a couple others that uh, will have an opportunity to compete for for the varsity um, before fix comes back, you know. Um, 41 with Dusty Hone and um, Kate Brock and 49, G Feller and, and Boo Llewellyn. Uh, 57 looks like it's competitive. Um, you know, the only way, there's not too many weights that I had that just say, okay, this guy's going to be the starter. Um, you know, so uh, it's just going to give us a chance to, to look at them and, and get a good feel of, of um, who's who's coming out of the gate pretty strong. Um, you know, we, we have, um, I mean, I don't believe that, that we're going to see, you know, this particular team be dominant yet, um, especially with, with the option of possibly starting two to three freshmen. Um, uh, but I think that as we, as we go through some of these early matches and experiences, um, I, I really going to expect for us to start separating ourselves, you know, and I think, uh, our, our real challenge in the early, I mean, early on is going to be, uh, halfway through the schedule, I guess, uh, is going to be you and I and Iowa state two teams that, uh, can win the big 12 this year. And I've already got some questions that there wasn't a stream linked to the, to the ranking matches. Do you know if there's any way that people are going to be able to watch those who aren't able to make it to the arena? I think so. Um, my understanding that uh, you will be able to watch it, but um, the TV uh, and the streaming for all these matches, my understanding that they'll be uh, televised uh, all, all four of our events including the fifth one with being the, the uh, orange and black uh, ranking matches. My understanding they'll be streamed uh, now. They may not stream all day. Uh, they, may, they may pick a dual meet and, and the most competitive dual meet and, and um, stream that. 
And then last thing for me, with, with how crazy this year can be in terms of guys getting the virus and stuff, how important is it? You mentioned all the all the close matchups that you're going to have uh, within your roster. How important is it to have two guys just about at every weight? Say that again. I'm sorry. With, with how crazy this year can be, how important is it to have about two guys that, that could go at any weight? Well, it's real important, you know. I mean, I think, I think the one thing that uh, I didn't understand – when the NCAA allowed us to, nobody could lose this season, whether you competed or not. Um, I didn't quite understand that. I didn't know why they were doing that. Why are they giving everybody another year? Well, you know, I figured it out when we had a little problem with COVID, you know, that uh, you can have a breakout, you know, and, and not have anyone really do anything that created the situation. Um, and you can have half your team wiped out. You know, so, um, you know, that's that's real important that uh, that if if somebody is out for 10 days or 14 days, that that we can use someone that we're not using their year, you know, that they're, they're going to get this year back regardless. So, you know, the, the only thing that, that that will happen with this is there's a possibility um, that there could be a five-time national champion someday. Um, and so uh, I appreciate it a lot more now than, than I did back in um, August when they came out with that. Uh, I was a little bit disappointed. I thought, listen, you know, um, it's hard enough to, that uh, we have to manage scholarships and, and now uh, we're extending some people's uh, uh, years of, of being able to wrestle uh, five years now in a six-year period if they redshirt. So, you know, a freshman this year could be wrestling for us and, and we can redshirt him next year. And then he'll have four more years after that. So it stretches it out to six. And, and that's what I was disturbed me a little bit is how it was going to affect us uh, in our scholarships. But uh, as, as we come to this point, um, I appreciate what they did. I think it, it's real important and it's, and it's going to allow us to suit up. We're going to suit up, you know, regardless of what happens, we're going to suit up and we're going to wrestle, you know, uh, and, you know, I just feel like uh, that, that's what we need to do. This is what, uh, what coach Holder, uh, you know, preached uh, all during uh, the football season is uh, let's let these student athletes uh, compete no matter who we have to put in. Thanks, Coach. Your next question will come from Robert Allen. Go ahead, Robert. Unmute that. Yeah, Coach. Um, how is all this, and then also when you start factoring the schedule where you're having multi-events versus the – and it really wasn't spread out. Usually you were on a Friday, Sunday yeah. calendar as yeah. far as, as matches. How will all that change what you do in the room? And, and how has COVID changed what you're doing in the room right now? Well, you know, that, it's a good question, Robert. Um, it's a challenge, you know. Um, the one thing about wrestling is um, we would have already competed and had probably 10 matches under our belt with probably five events on five different weekends. Um, you can train too much. You know, uh, when you have multiple matches in a week on a Friday, Saturday or a Friday, Sunday, like you said, um, you know, you're telling off on Wednesday and, and Thursday's a real light day. And, and then it's about uh, making weight and wrestling one dual meet uh, in between those matches, like on a Saturday, it's a light drill, you know, so just have a lot of workouts right now without competition and just I think we lost him. Let me see if I can get him back on real quick. Or maybe Cade can pick up with the answer mid sentence. Is he got? Is Cade that good? Negative. <laughs> Not that good. I don't know what goes on. <laughs> only in your corner. Only in your corner of the room. Yeah, I stay in my lane. <laughs> Do 
Yeah, how about that, Elmquist? My question, he, he fades out. <laughs> it happens. Maybe he's trying to get you on here more often. <laughs> yeah. I've made at least three of these. Now, one of them I just watched, didn't ask a question. You guys were doing such a good job. Heck, Marshall steals half my questions most of the time. It must mean they're pretty good questions. Damn good. I like that. His phone died. All right, we got him back. Okay. Robert, I was just finishing up. Sorry about that, guys. Um, yeah, it's just it, it's a challenge just to, to you know, you, you, you need those matches just to kind of break up hard workouts weekly. And, and, and by not having that, you know, I've had to really focus on trying to maintain a level of confidence, a level of interest, a level of uh, work. Um, and it, it's I'll tell you, Alan, if I had to go through it another year, I don't think I, I don't think I'd go through it. Um, it's tough. You know, and and um, just just uh, I'm just glad we're here and, and we finished up the, the semester uh, academically as as good as we ever finished. And 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 that's motivating. Um, and we've released them. They're going to come back on the 26th. And there's there's some real, real excitement right now, knowing that the season is getting ready to start. One follow-up, John, as a fan, and I, I, I do, I love to watch wrestling. Do you see maybe the format, some of the aspects of the scheduling format from this season continuing even when things get more back to normal? Because the, the you know, excitement of having a quadrangle, four teams in at once, uh, tournaments, especially the format you talked about that that mini tournament that's kind of streamlined those those seem to be great events for fans to get a whole bunch of wrestling in a small amount of time well it, but just think about this is is you got to be a little bit careful about the quality of, of teams i mean we're bringing right. in some quality teams and and you know three back-to-back -back matches that are tough 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 you, you just want to make sure we're coming out of it healthy you know, and doing that in the day, um, you know, I, I, I believe in dual meets. Dual meets is, is the strength of wrestling, and it always has been, you know. Um, presenting a two-hour dual meet and having a, a competitive match uh, brings more fans to, to Oklahoma State wrestling than anything we can do. Um, and it has, especially over the last several years, our, our attendance has been fantastic and it's because of the competition. Um, I don't think we'll see those multiple dual meets, but you, you could see a tournament like we're putting on in, in February where, you know, we're wrestling up to a point and then, Hey, come and watch the finals. Um, if you don't want to watch it all. So we're always looking Robert to, to, for the, that new person that comes in for the first time or maybe a couple of times we're always looking to attract that person you know in six hours of wrestling if he's not been around wrestling maybe <laughs> a little bit too much <laughs> it's fun to see a lot of different wrestlers though that's in, right in one place to see well, that is the, you're the variety see, yeah you're going to see eight guys out of weight and yeah. so um we're, we're given the option to our teams to bring up to 16 guys. And, and of course, you know, you might see two OSU guys in the finals. You might see, you know, um, you could see that maybe at yeah. a weight or two, you know, so um, you're going to get to see a lot of different wrestlers up to 80 different wrestlers in that tournament that we're going to run from 9 AM and we're going to be finished by 3 PM. I like it. Thank you. Your next question will come from Marcus Trevino, the Ocali. Go ahead, Marcus. Hey, Coach. Uh, I was wondering what the experience working with uh, Ryan Warren was like when he was um, interviewing you for the documentary about your family. Um, you know, he's an intelligent guy. He knows wrestling well. Um, he's creating. He's creating a. Uh, uh, 
creating a business behind all this. You know, I think his intentions when he started was, hey, we're going to get some additional wrestling out there. Um, but it's, it's grown into something much bigger because his, his intelligent level on the sport, the questions he asks, you know, he digs pretty deep. Uh, you don't get some of these questions. Uh, I, found, I found him asking me questions, and I'm like, how do you know this? You know, <laughs> and, well, who told you this? This is stuff that, that I don't – I can only remember telling one or two people, you know. Um, so he really digs, digs deep into his information uh, on, on his subject and what he wants out of it. Um, he really never really crossed any lines with me, you know, just – from a standpoint of, there were some tough questions that I prefer not to answer, but I recognize that um, who he was and what he was doing, and, and I respected what he was doing, you know. And um, anyway, it was uh, it was a good experience, and um, he brought up a lot of memories that I haven't thought about in a long time. You know, some of those memories I really didn't care to talk about. You know, um, but I think uh, in some ways, uh, I'm glad I, I did did the uh, interview with him. And I'm, I'm glad I got to share uh, some of those memories with with uh, with people. Um, and I think for some wrestlers, I think it can make a difference in their career. Thanks, Coach. You're welcome. You're muted, Reed. You're muted, yeah. Your next question will come from Jason. Hey, hey John. Uh, obviously, the last few years we've we've talked a lot about the, you know, the all the the struggles that that Booze had to deal with, and and not necessarily to try to uh, embarrass Cade here on the on the line, but talk about what what Cade has had to go through and and his you know decision to to come back and utilize this extra year that he was given due to uh, medical hardship. Well, you know, you know, Cade, Cade grew up here in Stillwater. He's had great ambitions. Uh, his ambition to, to, to be a star has always been there. Uh, I think that uh, he has struggled in, in, with some of his injuries, uh, serious injuries. Um, you know, things that I never really, as an athlete, ever had to go to, through. You know, I didn't have those setbacks and, and his setbacks were, were pretty prominent and um, just staying motivated during that time. And, and that's what I saw out of Cade, you know, I mean, I think in the long run, that, that's the lesson that you're going to learn that, that, you know, you go through wrestling and, and, and the love that you have for it and the drive that you have for it. And then bam, you're out for six weeks, bam, you're out for six months. Um, uh, those are the experiences down the road that, you know, as coach Gable once said, once you wrestle, everything becomes a little bit easier. Um, there's some truth to that, you know, um, when it comes to challenges in life. And these are, these are just experiences that he will build on. And, and as we know in life, uh, those struggles will come um, and how you handle them is going to, you're going to go back on your experience and he's had enough experiences. Uh, we want to keep him healthy this year. Um, and the way to stay healthy is just to, to maintain your level of, uh, of conditioning with your body, maintain your weight. And, and most of the time uh, things will fall into place, but we're glad to have him back. And, and I hope that uh, Cade will consider coming back for another year, you know, as they, as they, um, him and Boo, as they go into the sixth year, you know, um, sometimes um, people are ready to move on. Well, not many people get this opportunity. And so we haven't talked to him about it at, at, at this point, um, but it's definitely something we would love to have them back for, for another year. Um, uh, so, I hope that we, we follow through with this season and wrestle in the Big 12 and the NCAA championships. Um, that's, that's real important, I think, at, at this time for these guys uh, right now in their career. Um, another, another year of not wrestling in it, um, I'm not sure anybody's going to be motivated. So 
Uh, I like the way we, we have set up the schedule. It's not ideal. It's definitely not ideal, but it's given us the best opportunity to, for these guys to live out their dream of, of being an All-American NCAA champion at the end of the season. And we've talked about Austin uh, changing weights to, to help the team. And obviously, Cade has had to do that. I mean, he, you know, he, he was a, a an All-American at one weight and then obviously was, was uh, you know, made the move up to make the make room for, for Dayton. I mean, from from a team standpoint, just talk about his willingness to to do what's best for the, the program. And in, in that instance. Um, yeah, Cade's. Cade's definitely a student athlete that uh, will listen to his coach when it comes to where he needs to be, you know, where we think he should be, you know. Um, he doesn't dodge anybody. He's never dodged anyone. And, and, and it was real easy for him to move to 41. Um, we even talked about taking him back down to 33 this year for a period of time uh, or looked at it. Um, and in the end, uh, just made a decision that, uh, you know, he's had a chance to wrestle at 141 now. He's had a chance to experience the strength and the difference between 33 and 41. Uh, and that that experience, we, we should see him benefit from. Um, and again, you know, uh, the nice thing is we have another quality wrestler with Dusty Hone. Um, so it's just good to have a couple of good kids at the weight class that um, that can, uh, you know, compete on the same day. Um, if anybody gets a little dinged up, um, we're in, we're in good shape. So uh, looking forward to a healthy season. And that's going to be the key for us as we move forward is just try to try to stay healthy because the one thing that, that, all coaches are going to experience, especially me after 29 years is we're only wrestling one day a week, you know? So in my 30 years of coaching, I've never done this, you know, this is not something that, that we've done. It's, it adds another full day and a half of, of extra workouts. Um, and how are you going to treat those? And so, you know, there, there's a lot of things that we need to pay attention to as we go forward and, Staying healthy is definitely one of them. Any good embarrassing stories about Cade? Obviously, you've, I'm sure you got a lot with him growing up here in Stillwater uh, along with Joseph. I don't know if there's any embarrassing stories, but uh, I, I can tell you this, that uh, he's a great hunter, um, a great deer hunter. But um, he always tells the truth when, he's, when, he, when he goes hunting. And I'll just say this, he's missed a lot of deer with his bow. Um, <laughs> I don't know whether he got nervous or not, but, but this season uh, with his bow recurve, which is pretty remarkable, he's got a couple of nice pictures that he made up for all those deer that he did miss. And one of my greatest uh, times watching Cade was when Cade and Joseph we're wrestling little league here in Stillwater, eight years old, seven years old. And Cade just used to beat Joe up on, on a daily basis. Oh, there it goes, there it goes again. Cade, do you have anything to say about that? I mean, me and Joe grew up wrestling and <laughs> I kind of remember those days. Uh, and then when we got a little older, we, uh, me and Joe would go to those freestyle tournaments. And then I would go stay at Coach Smith's house with Joe. And me and Joe would go turkey hunting the next day <laughs> and run around the woods. <laughs> so so he, he, he was telling the truth and saying that you were beating up Joe when you guys were kids? When we were younger, uh, that, that didn't happen. As much, <laughs> I think and then Joe got bigger, and it never happened. <laughs> I, hey, Jason, I think Joe's got some sort of device that's blocking. Yeah, sorry guys. He started that yeah. conversation. I think he blocked his old man. <laughs> yeah, Joe where heard you talking about him. Huh? You, you Joe ended it where Joe him. was getting blistered by K. 
Well, Joe would get blistered by Cade. Joe would take off out the room. And by the time I could catch him, this happened about four or five times, he'd be a mile down the road. He's so mad. And I'd have to go get him in my truck, bring him back. And then I forced him to go back with Cade and Cade would blister him again. (laughs) So anyway, uh, I was just saying that uh, uh, there's a lot of enjoyment just being able to see these guys from Stillwater who you watched wrestle like Andrew Neiman and and we have a few more, uh, Cade and Joseph, uh, uh, you know, just kind of watching them grow up through the system. And here they are uh, uh, considered some of the best guys at their weights. And um, yeah, it's just, a, it's, a, it's been a fun journey with him. And uh, there's been a lot of laughs in it, but um, the biggest laughs is uh, Cade choking on those deer. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank it you. looks like, hold on, coach. It looks like we have one more question from no, Ben I, Engel. Uh, no, I'm, I, yeah, the question was for Cade. Oh, okay. Yeah, coach, then you're good to go. Thanks, coach. Hey, guys, Merry Christmas and thank you. Same to you. Thanks, Same, John. John. All right, go ahead, Adam. Hey, Cade, uh, it's funny. John, uh, Coach Smith actually uh, kind of, he talked about hunting. That's exactly what I was going to ask you, actually. So, uh, can, uh, you know, growing up in Stillwater, Oklahoma, you know, there's lots of hunting opportunities. Can you talk a little bit of, about, you know, that hobby, how you fell in love with hunting and why it's so important to you? Well, when I was growing up, my dad's who got me into hunting and my dad got me into hunting. It was uh, kind of something. a good hunter but I mean he wasn't you know great hunter and we would yearly uh go on our little hunting expeditions and we'd hunt all around all around still water and then as I kept growing in age I started veering toward bow hunting only and then that love kept growing and then it got to the point where I'd you know, would read books. It was just like wrestling to me. I would always be studying, wanting to get better and learn. And, you know, passion of mine. And it it allowed me to sometimes, especially as I got older and got into high school and college, it would kind of help me get away from some of the stresses of life and kind of let some of that stress melt away when you're kind of, when you're 20 foot up a tree and there ain't no, no a soul around and you're just kind of enjoying nature and God's great outdoors. It really helps kind of put some, some things in perspective when, you know, something's not going right or uh, when I was injured, I spent a lot of time in a tree uh, just getting to think and be with myself. And then, uh, so I, uh, I was kind of looking at your, your Instagram, you know, with, with all your uh, hunting pictures. So I have to know, tell me about Chaco Top. Oh, God. Chaco Top, that deer gave me the highest of highs and lowest of lows. I hunted, I hunted that deer for three years and hunted him. Uh, I never got an opportunity at him until it was, I think it was December the 10th. It had been December the 10th, 2017, 18. Yeah, 2017. It's 2017, 2018, 2019. I got him. All right. So 2017, December the 10th, 2017, I had that deer at. 20 yards broadside nothing obstructing a shot but he had broke off half his rack went on with that year and then the next year I had him at five yards beneath my tree at dark in my flashlight when I was trying to climb down and then saw him a couple more times and Never got an opportunity, and then the next year, when I actually got him, it'd been the third year I was hunting him, I uh, was hunting him pretty hard, and 
this was the year I was hurt. It was last year. I was injured and I was working out at night every night and just hunting every day. I had, that's all I did. At online classes. So I had the deer on camera all year. Uh, never had an encounter with him through the year and seemed like every time I wasn't able to go, he was there. And I was getting frustrated with him. And then finally I get an opportunity at that deer and uh, hit a limb, shot, shot and hit a limb, missed. And that's one of those stories coach was talking about where I choked, I guess. Uh, I hit a limb. It was going to hurt. It was going to smoke him, but I hit a limb. And oh, I about frustrated. I about wrapped my bow around a tree. And a little later on, we have a cold front come in and I decided to go right back in there after him because we had another buck in that same spot that I had history with, but not as much as Chaco, but he was every bit as big. And I go in with hopes of seeing one of the two and sure enough, here came Chaco at like 430 and all came together and put, put the hurt on him. Where, uh, like, where and where specifically in, in Oklahoma, around Stillwater? Uh, I've been west of Stillwater about 15, 20 miles. Okay. And uh, how, how did the name Chaco Top come about? That's a, that's another story. So the first, I actually wasn't the first person to ever see that deer. I had my uh, god brother, uh, Brent Willings, Charles Brent Willings. He's a... Uh, been a big mentor to me in my hunting uh and as i grow up i hunted with them they really taught me a lot of what i know and so one evening me and brent it was actually a morning yeah no it was a morning on halloween morning we went in the first time we ever seen this deer was that first year i hunted him and so brent's in a stand above me and we got the little video handy cam and what had happened was I had got some brand new waders and I wanted to sneak into acorn flat. And I wanted to go through this little, little Creek neck to get over there to it without, you know, coming in the outside and spooking everything. Cause I knew they came in from the outside. So Brent had a pair of real nice, hip waders and I just bought some cheap waders thinking ah, it'll be all right so we go walking in and about that time we get the moment I get about knee deep here comes water into the waders and I'm thinking oh no because it it was for two degrees that morning 33 degrees and we get on up into the tree and I remember taking my waders off and I mean I got just sweatpants on underneath the waders and I am cold. I got taking my socks off and putting them on, try to get them dry out. Brent's above me laughing. And we actually, I never saw a deer that morning, but Brent was above me and could see out on this other trail those deer were taking. And he goes, wow, there's, he, he ended up seeing like 22 deer. And, tall man he's big he's kind of chocolate horned and we kind of sat there after a while and came up with the name Choco Top and it stuck okay so Choco Top how uh how uh big big was he the year I got him so the first year we hunted him we found his shed he scored, would have scored about 170 uh total inches of horn gross and the next year I hunted him, he would have been six and a half years old and about a and I never got the opportunity that year. And then the year I got him, he was seven and a half and he, he actually scored 174 and he was a big old buck that seven and a half year old deer and we had him guesstimated at about 300 pounds in October, but when I actually got my arrow in him after the hard rutting season, he weighed about 250 on the hoof. 
Thanks. No problem. Okay, your next question will come from Dean Rule. Go ahead, Dean. Hey, Kate, how you doing today? Doing good. I right, just real quick, uh, have you gotten a chance to look at the schedule yet? Yeah, I uh, just looked at it about an hour ago. I didn't look at it in depth, though, but I looked at it. Do any dates or uh, opponents stick out just off your first glance? Oh, yeah. Which ones? Oh, all of them, but, you know, you, you, you can guess which ones probably stick out to me. The Bedlam? Bedlam's always, yeah. I owe that. And then uh, just can you kind of talk about Travis Whitlake as a teammate? Just kind of what are your thoughts on him and his oh, growth? Whitlake? Nah, he's a good guy. Uh <laughs> He works hard. He's uh, one of those freshmen that come in and, you know, in the room, you look at him and you kind of see him grow a little bit. But at the same time, when he right when he first got there, you, you see somebody that's, man, this kid's, this kid's mentally. T a lot of kids struggle in that department is, you know, they come – from an area where they're the big dog they're the big fish in a small pond and now they're with guys and they're not they're not beating everybody up and you really see the metal and the iron that the grit that people have in those moments and me and joe were lucky enough we grew up in it so it wasn't an adjustment for us but we see it And they're, you know, I don't get a takedown for the first week. And they're just like, oh, this is distraught. They just can't, they can't fathom it. it. It doesn't, they aren't used to it. And it's uncomfortable. You see some kids not, not quit, but like you see them kind of get into that. Well, whatever, I'm going to lose today. But Whitlake was tough. He, he, he would come in and he had the same consistent battle every day and, he was one of those mentally I noticed and just got. I mean, and it's weird to think now because, I mean, I'm five years older than most of them. You know, I'm a lot older than some of them. Uh, I think I got seven years on the youngest one even. And you see some of them, you, they're the typical freshmen, and then you see others, you're like, man, that kid's mentally tough already. And you, you kind of shows you the the development and progression of the sport as well because years ago, well, now you're seeing those freshmen come in and they're ready to bang and they're tough and they don't they don't have a lot of quitting them. Thank you, kid. Looks like your last question will come from Jason Elmquist. Go ahead, Jason. Hey, it's been a while. How you been, man? I've uh, been good. Well, spe speaking of the those freshmen, uh, it, the, looking at this freshman class, number one ranked uh, recruiting class coming in, have any of them? I'm, I'm sure some of them have stood out, but uh, what have you? Uh, what's been your impression of that class so far? Man, I like them. Uh, there's been some freshmen in the past that you know, with me. As long as you're tough, I don't. I'll be along with you. And if you have a sense of humor, it goes a long way too. But I'll tell you, this this freshman class is is different. They're uh, they're tough, mentally tough. They're the top recruits. You know, you you look at them and you see, man kid's good but think about in a couple of years he's gonna get whoo he's gonna be tough and you look at that freshman class and you're thinking man I mean if I had a good freshman class and this class is something else these guys are gonna be this team I mean it's on the up and up you know now now talking personally uh yourself um, you know, like I mentioned or asked John about um, for, for you, 
I guess, talk us through the process of deciding to uh, take this medical hardship, apply for it, and and accept it when it, when it was granted, uh, and and saying that you want to at least go one more year of of wrestling. So, last year, whenever I was trying to come back, I actually. So when I had my left knee redone, I mean, I tore <laughs> everything in that knee. And, I mean, I tore my MCL, ACL, LCL. And shot. And I was bound and determined I was going to come back. Because, you know, there's no guarantee I was going to get medical hardship. And I was, you know, had no option. There was no option of you know I'll just sit it out you know I was like I'm coming back I'm going to wrestle this season if it's on one leg and so I trained really hard and uh help at with uh coaching from Perry uh Chris Perry's dad at night we would do a lot of cardio stuff and he 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 helped me and then Smith helped me and Espo helped me and, and they all they all knew the process was not easy. And they pushed me. They kept pushing me. And, and then Smith brought and during that process, I had uh, when I first started getting back on the mat, I had hit a fake and what the meniscus they had repaired dislodged. It I had retore the meniscus. And so for about two weeks, I mean, I mean it was that thing was jiggling around through it, and I was always wearing my brace, of course. We uh, kept training, and it, I think it was about January the 15th, Smith brought me into the, the office, and we are talking, and he said, what are your thoughts? Are you 100% right now? And I said, Hundred percent, probably not. Can I wrestle and win? Yeah. And he said, "What would you say if we got you a medical hardship, however, if we could?" And I said, "I'd, I'd probably take it just because that gives me a full year to keep developing my skills and and so that's how we came about it. And yeah. we ended up taking that year, and then I ended up having another. I ended up having them go in and take my meniscus out uh, this summer, wrestled with it, locking around, j- jibbling around, coming out. I mean, meniscus would come out where I could see it and was just wrestling with it for about eight months and kind of knew how to jiggle my knee to get it to go back and got them to take it out. And ever since then, it's been a lot, a lot, a lot better, a lot more comfortable. Yeah. Well, then again, talking with, with asking John about it, I, I, I don't think I've had the opportunity to talk to with you really since you, you made that jump up in, in weight. I mean, what, uh, you know, obviously um, it, it's much different. You had success at, at 133, uh, you know, mm-hmm. all American there. What was your mindset making that decision? What was the adjustment like, not just physically, but, but mentally uh, going up against? guys that were just a different weight and different shape than what you've been used to. So it was, uh, for me, it was different. I, uh, I was a big 33 pounder. It'd be tough. I need time. I need a lot of time, but I, uh, kept, I got, I got, I, so I started with lifting a lot and I got big, but I, I got big in the wrong way. I had, uh, I'd got big, I put on some fat rather than I put on muscle. And so by the time we got into this full fledged season training every day, I was back down to where I was eating to stay up, drinking to keep my weight up. And it was, you know, and I had first, at the first part of that season, I was trying to wrestle them head on like I did at 33. You can't do that. I mean, it, it doesn't work that way if you're smaller than them. They were stronger. And 
so I that had to readjust my style back to a lot of faking, a lot of movement, make them wrestle into my game, and just over oh, through the year, kind of it showed me that I was a little small, I was a little undersized, and not too much, but prove upon my own game as well as upon my own body. And then I got hurt, and I probably put on probably eight pounds of muscle. And then, you know, this summer and this year itself, we've had more time, and I've probably put on another five pounds. I mean, I'm a legit 41-pounder as far as size now, whereas I may not have quite been that before. Now, going through the, the process of returning from, from injury and everything, how much did you rely on a guy like like Boo, who had, I mean, who's who's been through through it as well, who's had to recover from injury and and try to to, to battle his way back in in one of the toughest programs in the country? Uh, I'm pretty. Uh, I didn't really rely on anybody else outside of you know coaching staff and family. Uh, I would never really man, I'm trying to think about the way to put it I never really would go talk to Boo about you know how it felt or anything and I would always just focus on what I had an independent in that department if that makes sense yeah and then then John just kind of, of teased it and it was actually a question I was going to ask you have you thought about uh, that opportunity that the NCAA has presented of maybe coming back again next year? Oh, I've thought about it, and I'll still think about it every day. But <laughs> at the at the end of every day, I always come back with the same solution. Focus on the here and now. Worry about the later once I'm done with this season. Because every time I seem to try to look too far ahead, I end up injured. So I... <laughs> That way I can prevent from something like that happening because if I get injured again, it may, may, that may be the real end. So I focus on the here and now, and when I'm done with the here and now, then I'll focus on the later. So I'm going to focus on this season and get through it first and then evaluate my body and talk to coach and make that decision then. All right. Appreciate it, Cade. Good seeing you. Good seeing you too. Does anybody else have a question for Cade Brock? All right, is there anything you'd like to close with, Cade, that maybe we didn't touch on? All right. Sounds good. Thank you all for joining. Oh, yep. thank you all for joining. Have a good one. Thanks, Reed.